Now we will derive the variance of the ARMA11 model and the covariance of ARMA11 model and we will see we are going to basically use the same principle as we did for the Yule Walker equation. Uh, this is a little tricky and we are going to actually derive that. Uh, so yt and we have our et and then we will have theta et minus 1. What I am going to do is I am going to multiply on both the sides with yt minus k and here I am going to multiply yt minus k on right hand side as well yt minus k and I will take a covariance on that. So if I take a covariance on that, so let me write it down, covariance of yt, yt minus k is going to give us a gamma k and this side if I take a covariance of this it will actually give me something like covariance of this term is going to give me gamma k minus 1 and here I will have covariance of et comma y t minus k and then I will have a theta covariance of et minus 1 y t minus k okay so that's the equation now we have to sort of uh, expand this um, y t minus k on second and third term to see how it looks like so basically what I have now is gamma k equal to y gamma k minus 1 plus covariance of et yt minus k is going to be I will just recall my first equation for ARMA model and yt minus k is going to be so the right hand side would be phi yt minus k minus 1 and my et term is going to be nothing but e t minus k because I am simply replacing t with t minus k plus theta e t minus k minus 1 right so that's what we get and the last term last term is going to be theta and I have covariance of et minus 1 and then my yt minus k is again I will be replacing that yt minus k with the right hand side of my ARMA model equation so yt minus k minus 1 and then I will have et minus k because I have my t minus k instead of t now and the third term is theta e t minus k minus 1 okay so now it will be simple so this part a little complex probably not so good looking but uh, now it is going to be simple and it is going to be now I'll be using so I have this uh, equation and now I'm going to put value k equal to 0 for k equal to 0 what will happen is I will have of course gamma gamma 0 gamma 0 is equal to phi gamma 1 and here I will simply replace k equal to 0 and what I will get is so if I replace k equal to 0, I will have phi yt minus 1, the first term et and that will have no nothing. Um, and the second term is we are going to get a sigma square and third term et minus 1 et, there is nothing. So we are going to have a sigma square, sigma e square I can write term here, right. On the other hand, here what I am going to get is I have a theta of course outside and I put k equal to 0. So I have et minus 1 here yt minus 1 phi yt minus 1 here if I put uh, k equal to 0 et minus 1 et which is cancelling out in the last term I am going to have some value uh, so because I have both et minus 1 so then it will look like covariance of what I am going to get is covariance of et minus 1 and Okay, let me actually so what I'm going to get is 
I will have 5 into covariance of covariance of e t minus 1 comma y t minus k minus 1 okay so that's one term because and k is going to be 0 right so basically I can write y t minus 1 so since they have the same time so then time period so then we'll have some value out of this okay and then I will have what I'll have is here I'll again replace k equal to 0 so which means I will have a sigma square term so I will have theta sigma e square okay so that's the expression I'm going to get so here what I'll have is phi gamma 1 sigma e square and I will have if I expand y t minus 1 what I'll get is I will have a e t minus 1 here if I replace uh, y t minus 1 what I'll get is theta phi sigma e square plus theta sigma e square so which is going to give me phi gamma 1 so it, it, it looks a little complex and we actually don't need to do this exercise but I'm just deriving it because I want to give some idea about um, well so here I have to have a square we need to have some idea about uh, how the recursive equation for uh, you know arm you know for for the variance term or the covariance term would look like when you're considering a arm you know pq order model right so that's important and here this and that is here I have sigma square so this is basically the value of my gamma 0 value of my gamma 0 now if I replace uh, k equal to 1 I will actually get the value of gamma 1 okay so let's see if it is possible to do here let me we probably can do here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace k equal to 1 if I put k equal to 1 what I'm going to get is my right side is going to be gamma 1 and my left side is going to be um, k equal to 1 right so I have phi gamma 0 and then I will have so I'm now replacing k equal to so this is my equation 1 right so this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2 let's say so in equation 1 if I put um, uh, k equal to 1 right so if I put k equal to 1 so what I will have is k equal to 1 means I have y so this one y t minus a is going to be k, k minus 2 I have no value here is going to have k minus 1 I have no value here k minus 2 so the first term really won't have any value okay second term if I consider I have again let me think of k equal to 1 so k equal to 1, one means uh, y t minus 2 so e t minus 1 and y t minus 2 they have nothing uh, k equal to 1 so e t minus 1 e t minus 1 I get a sigma square term here I have a theta here so I write theta sigma e square right then the last term k is equal to 1 e t e t minus some um, oh, this is done so k e t minus 2 here e t minus 2 e t minus 2 so that will have no value so that's my equation number 3 okay now if I further use k equal to 2 if I further use k equal to 2 what I'm going to get is it's a little uh, lengthy but the reason I'm deriving it is just to give you an idea about the recursive equation form and how the ACF function is going to look like if we can derive that at the end of the day we'll have a fair idea about how the ACF function is going to look like so that is basically the idea for the whole derivation but the software will do the work we don't have to do anything here um, so again so I am replacing k equal to 2 so here I have gamma 2 gamma 2 is equal to k equal to 2 means I have phi gamma 1 and if you actually replace k equal to 2 in equation 1 so you have et y t minus 3 no value 
k equal to k equal to here sorry k equal to 2 so yeah so then uh, yeah phi y t minus 3 uh, plus e t minus 3 uh, e t minus 2 uh, and e t minus 3 it is nothing no value at all for the last term this term here for the this term you will have um, k equal to 2 right so e t minus 1 phi y t minus 3 and k equal to k equal to 2 e t minus 2 e t minus 1 e t minus 2 nothing and here I am going to have is e t minus 1 e t minus 3 so I am going to have nothing okay now so that's my equation 4 equation 4 okay now if I continue to actually increase the value of k if I keep on increasing the value of k what I am going to have is say let's write so from here let, if I if I use this if I use this and if I write say k equal to 3 let me write k equal to 3 so if I have k equal to 3 then I will have here I will have what I will have gamma 3 equal to phi into gamma 2 which means phi square gamma 1 right so using this generalization if I have k equal to n k equal to n I will I can write gamma n gamma n is equal to phi to the power n minus 1 into gamma 1 right and we get gamma 1 I'm not I'm not actually going to solve I mean we can solve gamma 1 by using this equation equation uh, in our case equation 3 and equation 2 okay so if we solve this we will get gamma 1 and gamma 2 so I'm just writing I'm just writing I'm just writing that we get gamma 1 by solving solving equation 2 and 3 okay so we get a value here we get a value with uh, uh, we, we get a expression here with uh, for gamma 1 uh, and that will only use the values of uh, phi and theta and sigma square so i'll have phi i'll have theta and i'll have sigma square okay so the idea here is um, as you keep on increasing the order so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a exponential sort of uh, you know decrease because my phi is going to be less than 1 so as you keep on increasing the order so you are going to have your SCF which has a lower and lower value so which means your arma so let me draw the SCF for your arma is going to see you are, you are going to see the exactly the same sort of properties when you consider the lags okay so as you move higher uh, move you know high increase the lags your graph is going to look like exponential decay I mean here my phi is actually greater than one okay so this one this one I have my phi sorry uh, my phi is positive my phi is uh, greater than zero so my when my phi is greater than zero, I'll have a positive. But if it is a, a less than zero, so I'll have a, I'll have uh, you know um, on the both side we will see the similar kind of pattern, similar kind of uh, exponential for exponential decrease. Okay, so that's basically the idea of ACA for a ARMA model. So we get the idea of variance, we get the idea of covariance, and we get the idea of how the ACA function would look like for a ARMA model. So